All right. Good morning, folks. I hope uh, everybody, everybody's okay. Um, uh, everyone's hanging in there, trying to adjust to the new normal here. Um, uh, I guess yesterday, uh, a lot of you folks weren't able to finish on time. I said the new schedule, I'm going to still try to adjust uh, the length of the videos to make sure that you can get the work done on time and, and um, um, submit it on time as well. So what I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to try to trim five minutes off the video. I tried to aim for 25 minutes yesterday. Uh, I got pretty close to that. And so today I got the timer set. Um, I'm going to try for 20 minutes and give you an opportunity and then uh, give you, I think that should give you plenty of time to, to get the work done in the video. And then by the end of the period submitted as well. But, you know, we'll, we'll take a look. Uh, we'll see how that works out. If we have to adjust some more, we will. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start the timer here and we will um, have 20 minutes uh, of class time, uh, a video lecture, and then um, uh, give you some time to work out these problems. Okay. All right. So what I'd like us to do just to start out this uh, period then is I want you to take a look at number four. These are the conversions that we've done before. Uh, you need to practice these. Remember, we got to make sure we are able to do this as part of stoichiometry. Uh, and then we'll continue on with the discussion of limiting reagents, um, get that uh, done. Hopefully uh, we're getting near the end of this chapter. And so um, I'll go ahead and let you guys know. I'll, I'll post a video uh, about how we will deal with um, exams or uh, possibly uh, possibly an exam and uh, quizzes for this chapter. Okay, so um, that'll be coming up in uh, in, a, uh, in a video that I'll make for you, and then I'll let you know how we'll we'll go about doing that. Okay, so take about a couple minutes to work out uh, these four problems here. Do do these conversions, and then. Um, We'll get back together and uh, we'll uh, we'll work it out. Okay, so go ahead, work out these four problems, and then uh, uh, work it out after that. Okay. All right, let's go ahead then, and let's work through these uh, four problems together. Okay, so we have been. Oh, sorry. Let me go ahead and um, work this out for you. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, first one. Okay, the first one then we have is a uh, ball, uh, again three questions you need to ask yourself. Um, Obviously, in all three of these here, we're going to be solving for moles. So that's what we're solving for. And so that's what the problem asks us. But each one of these, then we're starting with a, a different uh, quantity. Okay, so for the very first one, uh, we're starting with this volume of this gas at SDP. The clues you should use here then that, uh, I mean, you may not recognize that this is gas, but here we have a gas. So we have a gas at, so that's the first clue you should look for. Second clue here is at STP. So as soon as you recognize that, you know then what you'll be using here is the molar volume to solve for this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's uh, write this out. So we had a 5.40 liters of nitrogen dioxide gas. We're gonna solve for the um, moles of nitrogen dioxide gas. Okay, and so our conversion factor is gonna be the molar volume. We will divide by the molar volume, which is one mole of one mole of NO2 for 22.4 liters of NO2. We plug that in and we'll get our answer then as being, um, sorry, uh, 2.41, and I'll just write it above here, 2.41 moles of NO2, okay? All right, for the second one then, uh, this time we're starting out with 1.68 grams of magnesium ions. Again, we wanna find the moles. The fact then, let's go ahead and do this, and we have 1.68 uh, grams of magnesium, and this is magnesium ions, folks, it's Mg2+, plus, which means that it's lost two electrons. We're trying to find the moles of Mg2+. Plus. Okay. Now, we know, don't let the fact that this is an ion throw things off for you. We know then that, remember, the electrons that are 2,000 times less massive than the protons and the neutrons together. And so the mass of any atom, whether it's a charged atom or a neutral atom, will still be the same. Okay? So it'll still be the same um, because the electrons don't contribute that much mass. So, and so therefore, the molar mass of magnesium ion is going to be the same as the molar mass of magnesium, the neutral magnesium atom. And so let's go ahead. And with that said, then we can divide by the molar mass of magnesium which is the same as magnesium ion, and that's going to be um, 24 grams 
of magnesium ion. And so again, I'll write it up here for you. That'll give us an answer of 7.00 times 10 to the minus two, sorry about that, moles of magnesium ion, okay? All right, uh, let me go ahead and uh, let me work out these two down the bottom for you. And then, um, and then uh, uh, we'll finish up with this one, okay? So we have then, um, see, with the third problem, we have 69.6 grams. Formula for sodium hypochlorite is going to be NaClO. Okay. And we're going to solve for the moles of NaClO. Okay, molar mass then, we add up the uh, molar masses of sodium, one sodium, one chlorine, one oxygen together, and we should get a molar mass of 75. So we'll divide by molar mass, ClO, and that would give you 75 grams of NaClO. So we'd go ahead and divide that, we get our answer, then it's 9.28 times 10 to the minus one moles of sodium hypochlorite. And then for the last one, then we're starting out with the particles here of carbon monoxide. So the, well, we'll use Avogadro's numbers. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. We have 4.27 times 10 to the 24 molecules of CO, and I'll just write it as CO. We're going to um, find then the moles of CO. So again, we'll divide by Avogadro's number. So one mole CO over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of CO. Okay. If you get that, then you'll get your final answer. Then it's 7.09 moles of carbon monoxide. Okay. So please make sure you review that, folks. If um, that's something that you're unfamiliar with or if you've forgotten, make sure you review that. You'll need uh, that in order to do the work that we're going to do moving forward. You absolutely need to be able to do these conversions that we learned back in Chapter 10. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and let's pick up where we left off with yesterday. We were talking about limiting reagents. Limiting reagents are just simply the reactants. A reactant, one of the reactants that is, uh, is gonna run out first, and when it runs out, it limits the amount of product that we will get. That means then when the limiting reagent runs out, when that's all used up, reaction stops because there's no more of the reactant to, the, to, to react. Okay? And so I gave you the example of the hot dog, hot dog bun, but that applies to anything in real life. So for example, if you make cookies, if you run out of milk, you're not gonna make any more cookies. Or if you run out of flour, you're not gonna make any more cookies. And so therefore that particular ingredient, because it's gone, then you can't make any more of the product. And so that then would be the limiting reagent for that particular reaction, if you wanna think about it in that way. And so when we do chemistry, the same thing applies. When one of the starting material runs out, you can't make any more of the product. And so we just, uh, we just refer to that as the limiting reagent. It, it's the reagent, it's just another way that we say reactant. So the limiting reagent is the reactant that limits how much product will form. So when we do these problems here, it's going to be a stoichiometric calculation. It will end up being a stoichiometric calculation. But what we're doing is we're going to be comparing the reactants with each other and trying to figure out then which one will be uh, will run out first. And the method that we that I pointed out to you yesterday, the steps that you'll take yesterday, um, that you'll take, um, I kind of highlighted with the hot dog, Tim. You choose one of the reactants, and then you decide then, it's up to you which one you choose, it doesn't really matter. You decide which one you want to uh, uh, use to do the uh, stoichiometry, to do the calculation. And then what you can do is you can compare your answer to the answer that was given. So let's make sure we understand this right now. Okay? So what we're, before we even do anything else, make sure you identify then that this is the given amount of copper. So we still need to get the um, balance equation, do all the work, but there's a given amount of copper, and this is the given amount of sulfur, given meaning that it gives it to us in the problem, okay? So that's what we have right there. Make sure you identify that first, okay? And so let's go ahead now and let's write out the reaction. So we need, this is stoichiometry, so we need the balance equation to get this done. So we have then uh, copper, solid copper, okay, reacting with solid sulfur to produce then copper one sulfide as a solid. So that's gonna be our balance, uh, that's gonna be our skeleton equation. Let's go ahead and balance this here. Two in front of the copper will balance it out. So there's our balance equation, okay. Now what I like to do, and so I'll identify this here, okay. Uh, but what I would like to do then is I go ahead and I basically what you're going to do is you're going to set up your, 
circular conversion here, the stoichiometry here. And what I'm going to do is, again, you can choose either one of these here, but I set it up here. I'm going to say then that if I start out with 80 grams of copper here, the conversion here then is how many grams of sulfur will I need? That's the conversion that we're going to do. Conversely, you can do the same thing. You can, uh, or you can also say then you can start out with sulfur. You can say then, then that if you start out with 25 grams of sulfur, how many grams of copper then will we need? So you decide which one of these conversions you want to do. Okay, and so you're going to take this answer here, whatever answer you have here, and in this case, then you're going to compare it to the sulfur. Okay, and in this case, then here, you're going to compare this answer to the given amount of copper. You do not have to do both calculations. You choose one of those calculations to do, and then, uh, then you compare your answer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this one. I'm going to go ahead and do that calculation right there. I'm going to do that conversion right there, and let's go ahead and work that out. Okay. All right, so we're, I'm going to say then that we're going to start out with 80 grams of copper. Okay. We're going to solve then for the grams of sulfur that we need in order to um, uh, get this reaction done. Okay, so with that said then, this is a stoichiometric calculation. Uh, and I'll leave it up to you to uh, remember how we get these conversion factors. But if you cannot do it on your own, please make sure you come by uh, this afternoon get your questions answered, 315 to 415 on Zoom, okay? So here, we're starting out with copper, so we're gonna have to divide by the molar mass of copper, okay? We can get that straight from the periodic table. Uh, 63.5 in my periodic table, I know I, I you can round here, but uh, I went ahead and I just used that uh, one extra decimal place as well, okay? All right, so uh, second conversion factor is gonna be the mole ratio between copper and sulfur, which means then we're gonna divide by the uh, amount of copper, the so one mole of sulfur over two moles of copper. And then finally, the last conversion factor is gonna be then the uh, molar mass of sulfur. We're gonna multiply by the molar mass of sulfur and the molar mass of sulfur, my periodic table is 32.1 grams of sulfur over one mole of sulfur. Okay. You work that out then, and you'll get this answer here. You'll get an answer that's 20.2 grams of sulfur. This here, folks, is your calculated answer. This is your calculated answer. Okay. And since what we've done here, we're going to take this answer and compare it to that given amount of sulfur. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. So our calculated answer is going to be 20.2 grams of sulfur. Okay, so this is the calculated. We're going to compare that to the given, which is 25.0 grams of sulfur. The given amount is greater than the calculated amount. And so there it is. So this is calculated. We're comparing the calculated value to the given amount of sulfur. Okay. And since we have more sulfur than what we need, the sulfur then, what we conclude from this is sulfur is in excess. We have more than what we need. So the sulfur is in excess, but the question here is not asking us about the excess reagent. Okay? The, uh, it's asking us, asking us about the limiting reagent. But folks, there's only one other reactant in here. So if sulfur is the excess, and so let's go ahead and write this down as a, in, just in terms of the logic here, folks. If sulfur is the excess, if this is our excess reagent, the other reagent then must be the limiting reagent. And there it is. There's our answer. Our answer then, without having to, okay, uh, um, our answer then is that copper is your limiting reagent. Okay. All right. So this is basically the process that you'll have to do. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead then. I'd like you to try um, a problem. But before we do, just I want to point out something really quickly to you. If you notice here from the previous example, okay, we started out with 80 grams of uh, copper and uh, 32 grams, 32, uh, 25 grams of sulfur. The reactant that we start out with that is less, so we have less, we have less in terms of its mass, uh, less sulfur than copper, but if you saw then, this was not our limiting, this was actually our excess, so do not automatically assume then, just because we start out with less of a particular reactant, that that will be your limiting reagent, that will not work out, 
That, that will not always be the case every single time. Okay? You have to do the calculation. You have to do the stoichiometric calculation in order to make uh, that determination. So here, even though we have more copper to start out with in terms of its mass, we have 80 grams versus 25 grams of copper actually was the limiting reagent. It runs out first. Okay? All right. Now, with that said, there is a second way that you can go about uh, um, doing this limiting reagent calculation. You'll see it uh, presented to you in other textbooks. Some of your tutors may actually present this to you as well. But I just don't like that because uh, this, this method, because you have to do two uh, calculations. Okay? And the method then uh, requires that you take both reactants, both reactants here, find out how much product will form. And based on that, the, um, the, the reactant that yields in the smaller amount of product that's your limiting reagent. Okay, so um, if you are interested in doing that, or if you, you are curious about that, or you want clarification on that, stop by after school today. We'll work out a problem, or I will show you how that's done. But what I'd like to do then is take a look at number 19 in your problem set, and let's work out this problem here. And uh, take about a, uh, two or three minutes to work this problem out, okay? and then um, I'll work it out for you. Okay? And um, um, We'll see, uh, how, we'll compare answers, okay? All right, so go ahead and get this done, and then we'll work it out. Okay, so going, coming back to this uh, problem again, like I said, what you wanna do is you wanna identify what is given to you. So here we are given this amount of phosphoric acid. So that's the amount of phosphoric acid we're given. So this is a given, given to us in the problem before we do any calculation. And this is the given amount of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so there is the given amount there as well. Okay, so again, what you want to do then is decide uh, which calculation you want to do. So if you're given 1.75 moles here, you can go ahead and solve for the moles of sodium hydroxide here. That's something, that's one uh, conversion you can do, or, can, or you can also do the other conversion where you start out with five moles of sodium hydroxide and you're gonna find then how much phosphoric acid is needed. You choose one of those two, you don't have to do both. Again, do not do both, okay? And then you're gonna compare your answer, your, the answer here to what is given. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna do the first one, folks. Okay, I'm gonna do the first one. So we start out then with 1.75 moles of phosphoric acid, which is H3PO4, okay? And we wanna find then, the moles of sodium hydroxide that we need. That's what the calculation here is for, okay? All right, so with that said then, uh, folks, the conversion here is just a moles to moles conversion. So we only need one conversion factor, which is our mole ratio. The balance equation is given to you already, and so let's go ahead and just plug in the correct mole ratio, which is gonna be three moles of sodium hydroxide, one mole of phosphoric acid, okay? And then we'll plug it in, you get your answer then as being 5.25 moles of sodium hydroxide. So this is the calculated value. And so what do we do next? The last step then is to determine uh, the limiting reagent. Okay, We're going to compare the calculated value here, sodium hydroxide, to the given value of sodium hydroxide. Let's go ahead and do that. So our calculated value of sodium hydroxide is 5.25 moles of NaOH. Our given value of sodium hydroxide was 5 moles of NaOH. The calculated value or the given value is greater than the calculated value, which means then we have more than enough sodium hydroxide. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, folks. That's what I get for getting old. Okay. So the calculated value, let me go ahead and write that, push that. The calculated value is greater, so greater, than the given value, so our calculated value here, what we calculated for was greater than what was given to us in the problem to start out with. And so therefore, we do not have enough here of the sodium hydroxide. So therefore, what can we conclude about this? Conclude then that um, NaOH, sodium hydroxide, is the limiting reagent. It runs out first. Okay, so therefore this phosphoric acid will be our excess reagent. Okay, all right, very good. Let's go ahead then and uh, um, I'm going to um, pause right there so 
uh, what I would like to do then is just to cover with you really. Uh, so that that's it for accounting and limited agents. So tonight's homework's going to give you more uh, more of an opportunity to practice that. But the idea then is once you have the limited reagent, you don't want to stop there. Again, we want to be able to predict how much product is going to form. So once you have the limiting reagent, we can go ahead and use that particular amount, that particular amount of the limiting reagent to go ahead and find out how much product is going to form. Okay? And so the process here is pretty straightforward. You, again, you're just going to start out with the balanced equation. Then what you have to do is you have to calculate, you have to determine what the limiting reagent is. Okay? And then from there, then you can use the limiting reagent, find out then how much product will form. Okay? And, then, um, and then go ahead and uh, determine whether you're going to solve for that issue grams or in liters or in moles. So that's essentially it. So essentially here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing two calculations. We're going to calculate the limiting reagent here, and then we have to find then the amount of product that forms here. So two stoichiometric calculations that we will do um, uh, when we try to find the product here. And so what I would like to do then is I'm running out of time here. Uh, so uh, we'll start with this tomorrow. And um, what I'd like to do then is uh, work out these calculations for you. Please try the homework for tonight. Uh, it will give you some practice with the limiting reagents and how to calculate for those. Stop by after school today, 3.15 to 4.15 uh, in our Zoom classroom uh, in order to get extra help with that if you need it. But um, folks, let's see how this works. Like I said, I cut down five minutes of the, uh, of the lecture time here. I'm hoping that that will um, uh, work for us and give you ample time to get the calculations done in, uh, in, uh, in the discussion uh, and to turn it in as well, okay? All right, folks, so I will see you either this afternoon or I will see you uh, tomorrow in lecture, okay? All right, have a good day, folks.